scared you. Tom, I just wanted to make sure you knew that you were unmute or that you have unmuted yourself.
Is everyone here? Let's see. Um, I, Tom and Terry, but are Megan, me, and Lori. I see Lori, Megan. Yeah. They just don't have their video on. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. I like that. Hi, guys. Um, I'm going to uh, just open up the meeting. This is the Community Development Committee meeting. Um, so uh, roll call shows that uh, Tom is here, Lori Osher is here, Councillor Gardner is here, Councillor Grenier is here, Councillor Wingard is here, um, and I am here, but I'm going to turn this over to Councillor Grenier, because he is the chair of the committee. Yeah, so Sophie, is this the only item on here tonight? Because I didn't get an agenda, so. We didn't. Everybody got an agenda. It's in the drive I sent it to you. It has one item on it and a town oh. manager's report. Yeah. I have two important items in the manager's report that I'd like to get to if we can. Okay. I actually looked in the drive and didn't find it. Okay, I didn't put it in the drive. <laughs> I never said that. Oh. Yeah, no, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Great. So, um, yeah, so um, first I want to thank uh, Councillor Gardner for taking over while I was not able to last week. Um, with the continuation of the DEI um, moving this forward, uh, I think the hope tonight is to get to a space where um, we can move this forward so the staff has a clear um, a, a vision of where what we're expecting. I think everybody unless you had photo ops, had an opportunity to um, kind of like answer the questionnaire that was out there and stuff like that. So I, I want to kind of not rehash or, or not rehash, but bring up new things because um, we all had an opportunity to answer those questions to um, provide to Sophie so we could get this thing moving forward. So um, if, uh, so from here, uh, Sophie, do I just hand this off to you to kind of con do a continuation of this or? Here, I thought I handed it off to you. Um, so I could be completely wrong, and I do not in any way, shape, or form want to drive this process. This should be council's process. My hope today was that I would be able to walk away with two things. First is enough understanding of council's desires with regard to a JEDI committee or, or DEI committee um, that I could draft a charge so that you guys could actually respond to words on a page as opposed to just amorphous ideas. Um, and then the second thing I was hoping was that I could get enough understanding of your goals and objectives and where you'd like to drive our plan that I could work with staff to again draft the plan for you to give feedback and change. I just think council is set up to is kind of designed to respond to things as opposed to have seven people 
just working without product in front of you. Um, those were my goals. Just because they're my goals doesn't mean they're the right goals or what you want to do. But um, I, if, if I was looking for a starting point, it would be kind of looking at that first set of questions where council had indicated they were interested in forming a committee. And those questions kind of took you through what would be in a charge. Um, so the first one is if we're gonna form a committee, what would that overarching purpose be? What is it there for? So I know that everybody had an opportunity to kind of put their input on that. Um, and so let's let's kind of open up a discussion on that and, and try to get everybody's thoughts on what, what you read and, and, and what you think. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to open it up with your thoughts. Terry, do you think it would be helpful for us to like take the questionnaire document and kind of move through it to talk about each item? Because I think we might be able to narrow down the specifics of like a charge and all of the kind of, um, you know, parts, moving parts of how this might work. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm trying to like, on, I'm on my, my, um, my, um, uh, uh, iPad, so I'm trying to kind of like navigate this with two different things. <laughs> two. <laughs> Do you want me to like start off by reading? Yeah, this? yeah. What, could, could you please help me with yeah, that? That'd be, that'd sure. be great. Yep. I've got the PDF right here. So the first um, item that we responded to in the questionnaire um, was about the committee's overarching purpose, um, sort of the why of the existence of the committee in terms of what each, you know, each individual counselor that answered for the folks playing at home <laughs> uh, we we took you know some time to review all of the materials that we had and then responded to a questionnaire that Sophie um, developed um, regarding kind of like how do we come about a charge so the first thing was sort of a broad question about what we see as this committee's overarching purpose if folks want to jump in there So um, <clears throat> Megan and Terry, when I look at the three responses here, they're, they seem a little different. Like response one is sort of forward looking, right? Response two is kind of, you know, the purpose of the Jedi committee would be to improve practice and provide feedback to the town on issues as we go forward. The second one seems to think about, is more aspirational to assist in the promotion of, of justice and equity. And the third one, is sort of righting the wrongs of the past to review policies and practices that we may not have either drafted or implemented correctly in accordance with the EI goals or JEDI goals. I'm not sure that those are. Hey Jeff, can I just interrupt you just for one quick yeah. second? Because that third one is mine and that's not, that was not my intent at all. <laughs> okay. Well, what, what I was going to say is I, I think they're quite complementary, really, and they could very easily be sort of uh, you know, put together so that we have a statement that reflects the aspirations of the council to, to do great work, you know, in this field, and also to review our ongoing practices and our upcoming practices or forward going practices, right? However, that, so that, that was my thought, right? Is that, right, when we start off, right, we take the big step forward and then we can kind of like get all the nuts and bolts out of the way. Yeah, and by that I only meant that like um, I wasn't solely thinking about reviewing things that have already been done, although that shouldn't be off the table, but just as um, I think what I was trying to get at is that this is potentially uh, an asset and a resource to the town, both council and staff in terms of um, developing policy and, and approaches to service delivery that um, with, a, with a DEI lens that we might be missing or what might be we are missing <laughs> so um but yes reviewing things from the past also could be on the table there but yes forward thinking as well <laughs> so, so I, I i thought uh jeff's observation was was a very good one i i also thought that the three items that were submitted were quite complementary and i wouldn't be surprised if they could be nicely woven together into a charge Lori? Mm -hmm. Is Lori with us? She was. Yeah. 
Lori, do you have anything to add? You're on mute, by the way. Uh, do I have anything to add? I'm really excited that we're talking about this. I thought people gave very good input and I, uh, I agree with Sophie that we tend to work well when we have a proposal in front of us. And so this idea of us all coming up with how we can make this charge is a little awkward compared to the way we usually do things. Um, and we also had a DEI ad hoc or a committee that helped us. So I guess that wasn't part of their charge to make this description of what the committee would be. So I'm glad we're talking about it. And I liked people's suggestions. Great, Cheryl. Did, um, did I, 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 I like the reflex. I like, I, I am actually, um, what Jeff said, I'm gonna have to second that because um, I do see that all three of those is um, um, more comprehensive and I've, with the correct language, with the correct verbs, I think that a charge can be woven into that, um, into those three suggestions as well. And that was one of my concerns was um, what, what are they going to do? <laughs> so so we have a, we've got something a little bit more to work with. I so blend, blending these together um, seems to be a common um, statement. Um, yeah, with a little wordsmithing. Yeah, I think that's yeah. totally doable. Is doable a word? Doable is a word. Doable. <laughs> So um, yeah, so um, I'm. Where do we go with who's going to wordsmith this? And oh, I, I I see it as my job to at least throw something together. Meg will change it because she's really good at that. You'll all love it and have ideas, and we'll go back and forth for a little bit, and then we'll adopt some. Then you'll adopt something. Great idea. Feels <laughs> good. Yeah. I just got uh, voluntold, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy, happy to be voluntold for anything. I love that word. I'll work on it though. I'll do more than just bullet points. <laughs> okay, so we have that. So um, let's move on to that next point, which is uh, what are the committee's specific goals and objectives? Um, there's a lot here for uh, well, a, a bunch of good ideas. So let's let's start that discussion on on the what? Um, for me on these, some of these questions, it was fun. It was fun to read the answers because I think we interpreted the questions slightly differently. <laughs> and I think this is one of those examples, um, but that's a good thing because it brought in more ideas to kind of expand the conversation a little bit. So um, when I read, you know, um, are there specific deliverables? I was thinking about like whether that's like reporting to council or how, how the committee interacts with council. So like that was me down towards the bottom talking about, you know, briefings um, or letters or something. But I really was, um, I, you know, I was interested in the, the first answer there about wanting to receive feedback on these specific bullet pointed items. And I think that all of those are really important. So for the committee to give feedback on specific incidents related to DEI issues that occur in Orono, any deficiencies in the provision of services that may be due to DEI issues, recommendations for ongoing training that committee members feel is important and recommendations for language to ordinances and regulations that promote JEDI goals. Mm. Um, so Although I was thinking of it in a more mechanics way of like, oh, what's the deliverable? I guess, you know, certain reports to council, but um, these are more specific and more fine-tuned and I, I liked those. The, the one thing that I would ask council to think about just a little bit, and maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just look real quick. So, and I think this kind of goes with the next piece too. I think that looking at overarching policy that council would normally enact or be responsible for and looking at service level 
and as a policy matter, what services we're delivering them or how we deliver them as policy makes perfect sense. I, I, this is written in a way that I think could be construed to say complaints mm -hmm. against individual employees. And that would really create a due process issue for us. Um, the other thing I would want to just make sure, and again, this isn't saying you can't do it. I'm not telling you you can't do anything, um, but I would also wanna make sure that we were very clear that there is a place where complaints and concerns and incidents get reported internally to go through the internal process. Um, so that's the only thing that, kind of, the only thing that made me a little nervous here was the delineation between service delivery and personnel. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I am concerned that creating a board that deals with complaints, both from a risk management perspective and a due process for employees perspective could be problematic. And you might want to oh, yeah. be kind of totally, careful. Yeah, Sophie, I totally agree with that. And when I when I read like item D on that list of recommendate or I'm um, sorry, so, sorry, B, deficiencies and provision, provisions of service that may be due to DEI issues. I'm thinking more like hypothetical scenario. We're talking about trash collection in a, in a specific part of town. And we are trying to move forward with what we think is the good idea for addressing this problem. And we're able to get feedback that, you know what, if you do that, these could be unintended consequences where we're not delivering services equitably across town. Um, that's more how I was thinking of it, not complaints about specific employees or specific departments, um, but more just when we're trying to formulate policy that relates to service delivery, are we missing something? I, I think, um, and I think that that is totally a legitimate thing for people to, to look at. I think the mechanical question I would have for you is when you talk about when we, do, when we think about policies or recommendation on language to ordinances and regulations, how do you envision that working? So let's just say we're talking about trash delivery or we're, we're thinking about implementing a pay as you throw, which we're not, but if we were. <laughs> um, how would that, is it a matter of people that are on this committee would be engaged in the town and red flag something or yellow flag something to say, wait a minute, I think we should talk about that as a Jedi group. Is it something that mechanically every policy and every um, ordinance would go through this committee before it was approved? Um, are you going to kind of highlight areas that you think are within this group's domain um, so that it be kind of like with the planning board. Not every ordinance goes to the planning board, but we know all land use ordinances go to the planning board. Well, how, do you, how do you get things in front of them? When I, was, when I was thinking of these bullet points, what I was thinking is that this committee needs to have some, it, it is answerable to the council, but it needs to have some autonomy from council. So, we don't necessarily need to feed them every item that we're going to discuss, but we should okay. provide this committee with a list of items that, you know, maybe our workflow list or something like that, mm -hmm. so that the committee itself can decide which items they want to take up, um, mm. which may be a concern to people on that. Uh, you know, because I don't want to say to somebody, this isn't the purview of the Jedi committee, from my perspective as a privileged white guy, when... <laughs> It really is an issue yeah. that they want to talk yeah. about. Um, but nor do I want to like just burden this committee with like every piece of work that council does. Right? That might not be necessary. Mm -hmm. So they, they should be able to decide, you know, what they're concerned. Would there be some language that um, as opposed to this committee, um, uh, almost like an as needed committee. So when staff um, and council when, it, when this is an issue, an equitable, an equity issue um, or a diversity issue, when they feel that it needs another set of eyes or, they, or there's a question about um, whether this particular policy is um, 
um, not uh, serving a vulnerable population to run it past the committee, as opposed to feeding the committee every single thing like what Jeff said. So when staff sees a, or needs some, needs some advice, and, not, and I'm, when I'm saying staff, I'm saying departments or, or to council when we, when we say, you know what, maybe this, this might be a good place for, for the committee to, uh, to, to, to provide some feedback or some input. And here I was really hoping it would be a little bit more structured so that it couldn't come back that we were going around the committee if we didn't see that piece. I like the idea of we already do a planning list, we do a workflow list. It would be, I think, good for people to have a heads up as opposed so that we can work it into our process. Um, so often we're working with multiple stakeholders and that timing is important for council and other stakeholders. So if they knew it was coming and could flag it, we could work that into our into timeline. I, I kind of like that idea, but again, I'm not on sure. council. I, I really, really like both both of those suggestions, and I think that I, I'm envisioning almost like a three pronged approach here. One is that we do develop a work plan, and we should provide that to the the committee so that they kind of can see what we're working on, and they can flag items that they think they might like to be involved in, or know more about, or be part of that process. We should probably also have um, a mechanism where council can refer something to them. For example, if we are having that debate about trash collection and somebody says, hey, you know what? I feel like we don't have enough information. So can we refer this to the JEDI committee and then bring it back You know, um, after they've had a chance to, to talk about it? Um, and then finally, just to answer that kind of question or concern about like, are we feeding them every single thing that we're doing and like asking them to weigh in? Um, hopefully that's what the, that the toolkit would be used for. So, so if we're um, going to finish developing and then adopting the, the toolkit that we have a draft of, that provides us and staff with a mechanism to uh, make sure that we are actively intentionally using a DEI lens to look at policies and operational concerns on our own. Um, as, as we're going through, just as part of the routine process of bringing an item forward through the council process. Good point. Lori? Yes. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, thank you for asking. Um, I like the idea that the group would meet regularly whether or not we've given them a particular charge. I do think that it's important if we have something we would like to know from them that we would refer it to them. But I, um, I like the idea that the group would meet regularly and, um, and would be uh, somewhat autonomous of us. We give them a charge and then they let us know what they've heard from the community and what they've learned from, uh, from trying to do the best to meet our needs of what our charge was. Great. Tom, did you have anything to add? I, I'm still thinking about how we address uh, the concern that Sophie first brought up about making sure that we're not um, getting into the review of individual performance of employees. Um, and I think you will focus, Sophie, on that item B, any deficiencies in the provision of services. And I, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a way of reworking that phrase or really... Yeah focuses on maybe gaps in services or, or some language that um, deficiency um, to me speaks more personnel than it does um, inadequacy of service. As long as I know the council agrees with my pers perspective, um, I can definitely find language there that kind of threads that needle. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that perspective. I. I, that was exactly where I was going also, because I think that that's one of those things, as we've seen in the past, when you start kind of going after individuals, it, it, it's, it's not right and it, it should not be right. Um, and I, my, my, my big concern is, as, a, as always, is to protect our staff 
from that possibility of somebody singling them out for something they may not agree with. So uh, I'm like Tom said, figuring out the right wording to make it so it doesn't apply specifically to an individual or department or any personnel type stuff. Yeah, and beyond ethical concerns, there are legal concerns. I mean, right. they, they have a right to due process um, as Sophie pointed out. Right. Yep. Lori. So, um, so I have mentioned to you guys, or not to all of you, some of you were not in the town council when I wrote how I have had workplace experiences yeah. that were uh, unpleasant based on the discrimination by other employees in the same workplace against me. And I, um, I know that, that the people who are doing their best to protect the rights of those who um, at that point when the person who feels uncomfortable says they're uncomfortable about the behavior of a different of another person that the that the one of the things to do is to to protect the rights of the people who are the accused however uh it really feels when you're the person who's being discriminated against like the cards are all stacked against you and this whole process i really appreciate everyone being very focused on how to make this committee and and frame it but it's been it's as they say, triggering for me. This whole process has been very challenging for me um, because I don't have a lot of faith that we as a government agency or as a workplace uh, really will end up creating a process that protects people because unfortunately the way our culture has been, uh, our culture, that's culture writ large, not just American culture or no culture, is to, uh, often uh, assume that someone who's who's complaining of discomfort is is making a big deal out of nothing and the goals have often been for people to uh, not speak out and so it takes a lot you know it took over 60 some women to saying that Bill Cosby had drugged them for him to actually be taken to task in the press and the courts. <laughs> so um, so anyway, I, that's what I, I appreciate that you're to workplace and we have to protect work, workers' rights. Um, but but I, I also, I'm, I'm so sure that we need to, that when we create this committee, we need to allow them to um, work in a way that makes their, the people's discomfort have a place to be heard and they work as allies to people who are who feel uncomfortable, uh, and and so that's really important to me. Thank you, Sophie. You, you had you nothing to add to that. No, no, nothing. Okay. Um, so um, moving from here, um, so what 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 is the general consensus of um, of um, I think we're all kind of in agreement with kind of how that's laid out, if I can go back to that. With the exception of the wording on, um, yeah. I'm, I'm struggling with this here. I, I, I just think we're, we're in agreement with pretty much all of the stuff of just making sure that we we, we write it in a manner that does not put um, a, a staff member at, at, at risk. If, if I'm off base on this, could somebody please let me know that I'm off? So, Sophie, is, I, um, for- I have enough for a draft there, and then you can- Okay. And Sophie, when, okay, great. as we get closer, I just have a question. For Sophie, as we get closer to this on issues like personnel and things like that, this will be run past our town attorney, correct? To make sure that every, that we are okay and that and, and my, my concern it depends on how close you get. Okay. If you get really close, then I'll run it by the town attorney. Make sure if you that, stay with yeah. a clear division the way we well, have here. Um, then I don't think we need to. But okay. my um, my concern is um, also when you're talking about issues of people. 
and you know sensitive issues and things like that um, is confidentiality and the way things spread around the town. And so if anyone gets put in a compromised position because of this, then, um, then there might be some liability involved as well in those instances, not in anything else, but I'm just, was just listening to Lori and thinking that maybe there might be some, well, there might be something might come up if, if it is, if there are some sensitivity issues. So um, personnel management aside, right? Because I can't imagine that council would want an outside committee to engage in personnel management when it doesn't engage in personnel no. management. Mm -hmm. However, I think um, in a more, um, depending on who is on the committee, uh, I think one role that the committee could absolutely have um, is that of, um, for lack of a better term, ambassador, meaning you have a group of people who are connected in various ways with groups of historically marginalized folks. Um, and maybe it is not easy to make a complaint that needs to be made. Instead of taking the complaint at the committee, I would see the avenue being committee person should understand what the town's complaint process is and could help make the connection much like counselors do. Um, so I mean, it's always good to make friends that can, can help, but I guess I would see that as the role not to create a secondary process. Right. That makes sense. So we've got enough on that. So let's move on to the next item. Uh, are there areas of I or items that council wants to clarify are expressly uh, not within the charge? Terry, did you want to go through two, three, four, and five of number of B? Or oh, what? oh, I thought we had already gone through. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. If we need to. Well, I think uh, Sophie had enough information to kind of draft something based on the conversation, um, unless somebody feels differently. Okay. We good? Okay, so we'll move on then to, are there areas of or items that council wants to clarify or expressly not within the charge? There were two items that were written on that. Comments, uh, thoughts? Well, both comments are pretty close to each other. And I think we've certainly agreed that we don't want them to have um, operational authority. Um, I'm not sure whether that goes back to the charge. Um, I think all of this folds into a charge and um, kind of the multi, hmm. multi-layered charge like we've done for other, or, uh, other groups. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think this is something that has been part of the conversation all along, and I agree with both of these items that, you know, the committee wouldn't have operational authority over any town employee, um, that it's an advisory committee, it doesn't speak for the town, um, it's not in a position of oversight over staff or council, it, um, you know, I mean, I feel like that's appropriate. Yep. Mm -hmm. I do also. Any and, and I was going to say too. And recommendations are recommendations; they're not directives. Right. Correct. Everybody okay with this one? Yep. Okay. Let's move on here to C. Um, who will serve on the committee? How will they be chosen? How long will they serve? And how will new members be selected? This one had a lot of thought. It had a lot of thoughts, but I think they were kind of almost all the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like the sweet spot is between five and 10. Um, I think there was a between five and 10, there was a seven, and there was a no more than 10. 
Um, <clears throat> in terms of how they'll be chosen, there seemed to be kind of a similar feeling to how the ad hoc committee was chosen, which was a, was a, a combination of putting out a call to the community for applications that council reviewed and also individual counselors or staff with personal connections reaching out to specific people to ask them to apply, at which point council um, reviews the applications and then appoints members to the board. Um, many people talked about having one to three year terms or two year terms um, and then how to stagger them initially so that we are not seeing a complete turnover every time. Um, there was one comment, so all of that seems pretty similar across the comments to me. I guess the only thing, and these aren't these aren't competing or clashing comments at all, but there was a little bit of discussion about um, encouraging the membership to be diverse in age, gender, race, ethnicity, mental health, physical ability, religion, socioeconomic status, type of residence, um, and then. Um, making sure and then another comment about there shouldn't be a quota of any particular identities on the board and I agree with that as well mm -hmm. I think the only thing was there was one there was just one comment about who should be eligible and I think there was the only this is the only point of contention in all of the feedback here is one comment said only or no residents should be eligible. And another comment said members should live, own a business or work at slash attend a school within the town of Orono. So I guess that probably should be our main point of discussion for this, right? Yeah, yeah that sounds right. So what are, you, what, are, what are the thoughts on that? Lori? Well, for the original committee, we did the, some of the people on the original committee who are so valuable in developing the, what they, the report that they made for us did not fit in those categories. And so I, I guess I'm, I think that those, just as we did with the tree board, we ended up saying that we just needed people who knew a lot about trees and they didn't necessarily have to live in Orno. We, that was changed since I've been on the council because we, we really really needed people who knew about trees, not, not, not where they lived. And so in the same way, I think limiting it to people who, although we have so many wise and, and thoughtful people and people who might represent diversity that live or work in Orno, they may not be available at the time that we're looking for a new person to be on this committee. And so I think that that's, um, you know, we greater Bangor area seems like that would be more reasonable. I, I, I'd feel much more comfortable with committee members who have a strong connection to Orono. I, I was thinking strictly Orono residents, but I, but I, I like the idea of um, people who work in Orono or own a business in Orono um, being, a, being a possibility, but I guess I, I would personally not be comfortable opening it up to the greater Bangor area necessarily. Well, um, I, I've been, since I've been on the council trying to recruit a, a member, member of the Penobscot nation to run for council and I haven't been able to get someone even though we have members in the nation that live in Orno. And, uh, and so the, several of the things on, on the summary report discussed tribal relations and mm -hmm. and so th there's an example of uh if, whether it's the greater bangor area you know maybe someone who's from indian island and that's not mm -hmm. orno or mm -hmm. and the you know, we had someone who worked for the school ward for the for the school system in bangor but did their graduate work at orno and lives in old town and she was certainly an asset to the committee that we had so i, I guess I, I i still maintain that um the, the the greater area than our the, the our town is because our town connects with people in the greater area uh, specifically native people but also uh -huh. other, there may be others uh -huh. on my way into feel, i'm, I'm sorry, Cheryl, oh, oh go ahead megan it's okay <laughs> i was gonna say i i feel very strongly that as tom said the person should have a strong connection to orono i would not want to seat someone on the committee who may have a wealth of experience, but they are, you know, they're from um, a different community and they have no tie to this particular community or this particular town. Um, I think that we could probably find a compromise by saying that preference is given to people who live, work, or attend school in Orono, 
or own a business in Orono, mm -hmm. but that we should have something on the application that would provide an alternative means for someone to explain what their connection is to the community and that we could consider that. Um, because when I look at the ad hoc committee, almost when you say like live, work, go to school, own a business in Orono, almost everybody on that committee met that requirement except maybe Dana. And I think that if we had a part of the application that said explain your relationship to Orno or your tie to this community, then there could just be a discussion of like how, how, how I feel connected to Orono and that would allow us to consider that as well. Mm. And I'm, I'm gonna echo that too, um, Megan. And so my, my thinking is I'm, I'm, I'm um, much more interested in having Orono residents because they live here, they play here, they raise their kids here, they vote here, they're here. Business owners um, are here as well. But um, if I, I mean, I grew up in Bangor. I couldn't even imagine being on a committee in Bangor and having oversight over Bangor's council um, when I, you know, when it's not a place that I vote, it's not a place that I, my kids go to school. It's not, it's not my, where my friends are. Um, but I'm, you know, but I grew up there. So I, I think that we, that this is an Orono, um, this is an Orno council. This is an Orno, uh, you know, people people who live here, um, shop here, go to school here, eat here, go to restaurants. I mean, they're they're integrated into the community, into the community, um, and are much more sensitive, I think, to community needs. And so um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with um, Orno residents. I would I would be swayed. Uh, by someone who owned a business, who owned a business here, um, maybe. Um, but going to the University of Maine for me is not uh, enough of a criteria unless they live in Orno. Great. Yeah, um, so oh, oh, sorry. No, 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 go, go, go. I, said, go, I was, go. I guess I'm only thinking of like, for example, I, um, I took Ella to see the International Dance Festival this weekend. And I'm thinking about like, what about the grad student that's gone here for years and is part of this community in a meaningful way, but maybe they live across the town line in Old Town. And but but their voice could be really important on something like this. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out an opportunity for people who, despite their address, might actually really be very connected to this community. Well, I think, Megan, your idea of vetting that first, you know, on an application and vetting it is is appropriate. Yeah, so my, my thought was kind of like, as we had this conversation was more like, uh, yeah, I, I, is there like a, a preference, if you want to call it that way, on somebody who's an actual residence that lives here, um, those being at the front, and then as I thought about it, it'd be like going, then, then you kind of graduated down towards the spots of like, the other individuals, as you were saying, that have the connections, and, and what that, but I think Meg, you actually said that probably the best way of putting it is, is that having some kind of segment within that application that 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 says what is your connection what you know how how do you fit in within our community mm -hmm. um and then as we go beyond those individuals you know because what if we don't have uh, enough people that want to be on that committee that are actually or no based um individuals um where do we go from there so so what what, what do you guys think do, do you think um for for sophie to to move forward um <laughs> Can I tell you where I would be if you said nothing more? My suggestion back to you would be that we actually craft an application that's a little bit different um, than other volunteer roles. Mm -hmm. And um, we ask people why they want to be on the committee, what experience or skills they bring to the committee. And, wow, this might not actually be that much different than our current application. But then those applications would flow to council and you could weigh them. Um, you know, I am not talking about the ad hoc committee, but just in general, I could see that you might get people even from the community that were very excited and passionate about the national theme and wanting to do national things. Whereas the council's majority has said in the past, they really wanna be focused on what's best for Orono and mm -hmm. Orono size this. So I'm not sure it's where somebody lives, but rather 
what they would bring to it. And I think if council could, you know, look at that and compare and contrast and and really pay attention to the committee um, selection process and maybe take a couple of counselors that would make some recommendations, but bring it to a committee so everybody could have a voice. I think that could be a good thing. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and just from a procedural standpoint, I, I know that we have somebody with their virtual hand up in the audience. I don't know how you want to deal with that, Terry, and where you're on a iPad, you probably wouldn't be able to see that. Yeah, and usually on my committees, I unless it's I mean these are these are kind of like just a workshop thing, so I typically don't um, don't even look at those um, unless okay. people unless people want to. Um, but as a committee chair, I typically kind of in, the, in these forums, I I mean if they want to send in um, a question, fine. But um, yeah, so we're good with that, Sophie. Yeah. So I'll attach the committee application and if that works for folks, great. And if it doesn't, then we can revisit this language and talk about it again. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trying to figure out where we're at. I'm, I'm just, this iPad is giving me, what, what letter are we on now? Yeah, we're, on D. Yeah, we're, we're on how the committee will function. Okay, great. Um, who, who and when does it report? to the town council, how is it staff? Does staff have an active or passive role with the committee? Great, so we have three responses on that. So let's start this discussion. Any thoughts from anybody here? Well, I, I, I saw um, there, I saw a role for a council representative as a liaison member to the committee. Um, and I, I mentioned that up in the comment I made on the on the previous item. Um, I didn't know whether it should be a, um, a council member or a senior staff member, but I'd, I, I think just in terms of, of facilitating the committee's work, not necessarily being a decision maker on the committee because we, we, we don't we don't want that I don't want that anyway but I, I did think it was important that, that they be staffed in some way just as our planning board is staffed. Every committee that we have has an assigned staff person to it um, and for this I would assume that the assigned staff person would be the town manager unless otherwise directed by the town council. Um, and these will be, they have to be public mm -hmm. meetings. If you're creating this committee, mm -hmm. they are public meetings regardless of who's on them. I, I wonder if, and you may not see that there's a conflict, but I, I wonder if having somebody other than the person who is town manager be the staff liaison, because if you're the chief civil rights officer of the town, mm -hmm. and this is a committee that is discussing those issues and potentially bringing issues back to council, you know, that may alter the town manager's charge as civil rights officer. So, I, I, I think it, it may be more helpful to, I mean, it may be the assistant town manager might, from a structural point of view, be a more relevant person. I mean, so um, every committee that I staff with council can potentially change my job, every single one of them. Um, when you think about this work, along with being the civil rights person, I am the person that directs staff. And unlike other communities where an assistant is, the assistant manager is a subset of the manager, here, that is not really how it, it works. Um, mm -hmm. My assistant has a whole bevy of technical um, 
work that she does and I am charged with doing the people work. Um, I'm also the HR person. So when you start talking about what you can and can't do, mm. that kind of is, is part of it. You know, ultimately council gets to decide what council wants to do. That's the beauty of being an elected official. Um, <laughs> in this, <laughs> but even like for planning board, as an example, I choose who is going to serve on the planning board. I could go sit on the planning board and staff the planning board. I choose not to because there's technical expertise that needs to happen there. And um, so if, if that becomes the litmus test, then I wouldn't be able to serve on just about any staff, I, just about any committee. I just think this committee is unique. I mean, the, the presence of a counselor or a staff member on a committee like this has the potential to have a chilling effect on the discussions of that and the internal discussions of that committee because they are inevitably going to discuss issues that they feel may be injustices committed by either the council or the town. So if you are the arbiter for all civil rights stuff in the town and we want to facilitate a free and open discussion among members of the committee, I just, this has nothing to do with Sophie as an individual, but this no, has, I don't, no, I don't this, take this it that is, way. This is just like the idea that if the manager is the civil rights officer and has the potential to, you know, making decisions that members of this committee may not agree with at some point, mm -hmm. right? Then having that person also sit on the committee can have potentially a, a really, Sort of, but uh, wouldn't you want that person to be the closest to being educated to do things the right way uh, as I they perceive it? I certainly do, but we just said the charge of this committee is not to educate, it's to recommend the education to the staff, right? I mean, this committee is not conducting education for counselor staff itself. No. So. I think, so, when I go back to the ad hoc committee and I think about the things that went well and the things that made it kind of a bumpy ride, I think that lack of connection to staff created a disconnect that was counterproductive to moving smoothly. And um, when I look at the city of Bangor, that is staffed by the assistant city manager, who is the HR person and civil rights and oversees all of the HR department and does a lot of the same things that I do here. Um, and I see it as an interwoven committee that they have in Bangor where staff are bringing things and talking to folks. I it would be in, I guess when I vision this, not my committee, but when I vision it, I see it not as an us and them any more than I see bringing policies or practices to town council and town council saying, no, I don't wanna do it that way, Sophie. I, we wanna do it a different way. And so the team that we build and the rapport that we build allows us to move in productive, ways and to open viewpoints but feeling like we are a team even though it's a stratified team and this I wouldn't see any committee being any different I wouldn't lead a committee that's not what I do with council committees um, but I just I think we're asking staff regardless of how you frame it either in the way that they approach their day-to-day -day work or in the services that we provide or in the recommendations that we bring forward on an ongoing basis to council. We're asking them to grow and to stretch and to look at the way we do things differently. We ask them to do that about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is important. I think DEI is important, but 
Um, I, I think that to disconnect it from staff is, in the, is counterproductive. And I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. And I think the way to make people feel comfortable is all in how you approach it from the very beginning. And um, staff is supposed to be a blank slate in many ways. And, um, but I think allowing a narrative to be spun that is completely the antithesis of what we do operationally or how we function is counterproductive to getting people to move forward. No, I 100% I agree that there should be a staff member assigned as the permanent liaison to this committee. I just wonder why since the committee is, you know, the ad hoc committee talked about the provision of public safety services quite a bit and they talked about some other issues why the public safety director isn't the person who is the permanent liaison to this rather than the town manager. Because the public safety director works for me. Yes. <laughs> because the public safety director has a lot on their plate. Everybody because does. I have, an, I have an internal management, DEI management team that includes the public safety director, the library director, mm -hmm. and the assistant manager because of the IT and communications functions. I think it would be stepping, it would be a step out of our box. Um, ultimately councils call, but a step out of the box to assign a specific staff person other than the town manager to staff a council created committee. So we have an appeals board. Mm -hmm. I have elected to have the town attorney staff the appeals board because of the potential conflict in that. But in the ordinance, you haven't you haven't said that. I I could be right. sitting there staffing. <laughs> right now, right now, I am the lead in the DEI work right and so it's kind of internally so it feels kind of like asking the code officer to staff the planning board when we have a planner mm -hmm. that's what it and I, and I don't again I'm not I am not bucking for another job <laughs> really <laughs> not but when I th think about it kind of that way of yeah. um, right now this work has primary importance and it sits in my office with assistance from an incredibly talented, very busy core team of senior staffers. But ultimately I'm the one that's leading it. Tom, well, to say I hear what you're saying. I hear what yes. you're saying. I can be convinced, but I, I gotta think about it. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm gonna ditto that right back to you. Tom, you wanted to say something? I think I'm I'm all set. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm convinced. Um, I think it should be the manager um, staffing it. So actually, Jeff, could you say I, I actually when you first made your statement, I was with you. So can you? And then we had all this conversation. So can you say again your thoughts about this? Uh, the staffing and and how yeah uh, okay yeah briefly because I I, I don't want to I think Sophie addressed it but um, what I was thinking is within the Jedi committee or DEI committee uh, we hope that there's a free and unrestrained discussion of the issues that they want to discuss right and that some of those issues uh, are going to maybe in opposition to decisions that the town manager has to make in their role as the chief civil rights officer of the town. And so my fear is that having the person who has that role also be the liaison to the committee may kind of stifle some of the discussion that that committee is gonna have, not intentionally, right? But just by the presence of having that institutional power sitting in, you know, in observation of that committee, 
it may not allow that committee to discuss freely what it really feels are the issues of the day. And, you know, I guess the reason I'm thinking this is because we've talked about the difference between equality and equity. And what I've learned is that equity is, you know, equity has to be individualized. And if people, if we have a process which is uniform, right? Our, all our processes as a town have to be uniform. But then we're striving for equity, which is in a sense, disuniform or ununiform, however you say that, right? Because some people need a higher box to stand on than other people, right? Th those are two kind of separate things. I don't know, maybe I'm not explaining it correctly, mm -hmm. but I, I think Sophie did a very good job describing operationally why it's good to have to the that. town manager there. I just have to think about it a little bit more. Well, I appreciate um, that perspective. I also hear what Sophie's saying, which is that she has many hats she wears and she already, I don't know how she does everything she does and the time she has. So this would be adding another uh, place she has to be to her list. But the one possibility, um, and, I, and I, I thank you, Jeff, for describing that that equity piece, because as I said about being triggered, when you're a, when you're in a position where something is very challenging to communicate, then you want the the this organization that we're creating, this committee, to be welcoming and to and to be a place where where people feel safe, and so maybe the way to go about this is to assume it's we need to, we would staff it but how about an application that opens it up to town employees similar to the way other members are selected and so that they would apply to be the staff person who did this job and of course they're going as every staff person they work for sophie and they would be in you know in regular communication with sophie about the job and sometimes that would be the best person from the staff standpoint would be our town manager and other times there might be some other person that would be a really good fit for this committee. So I understand, I hear what you're saying, Jeff, but when I, when I take all of these factors into account and I think about the ad hoc committee process, I still believe that we did that committee a disservice by having them operate essentially in a vacuum. They probably, it, it was good, it was good to get the broadest scope of recommendations that they might give us, but they were clearly, you know, hobbled in some way by the fact that they don't have any operational knowledge or institutional knowledge of the town, how it functions, what's legal and what's not legal, what, what we can and can't do, what we have done already, what we're what's in progress, um, the, the operations and the, his, the institutional knowledge of the town was almost completely absent to them by our design. And I believe that that was a mistake. And that um, while we did get a, a lot of great recommendations out of that process, we also got a lot of recommendations that were um, you know, based on the foundation of not having knowledge or access yeah. to knowledge. And that was our, our design, and I, I don't think that it was the right choice, they were sort of working in the dark. And the last thing I wanna do is set this committee up to a similar process where they're kind of fumbling in the dark, doing the things that they think they should do, but also not having that basis of institutional knowledge or operational knowledge um, or institutional history, I mean. Um, and so for me, when I think about the person who is best poised <laughs> to provide that information, it's clearly it's our town manager, because I think also, I mean, think of a council meeting. We are elected people who are in charge of a lot of things for this town, but we need Sophie to, and, and her senior staff members to sit with us and walk us through what is legal, what is possible, what is part of municipal purview, um, what has been done in the past and what we're looking to do in the future or might already be in process. That is the role of staff. And the other component that's really important about staff in general and Sophie in particular as our manager is, is a complete and utter neutrality that regardless of whatever 
staff might think about what's the best path for council to take, they do not lead us in a direction. They give us all of the information. They might go as far as to say, here's what would happen that might be bad if you choose option C. Um, but in general, we are presented with the information, all of the choices, and we make decisions as a council. That's the same kind of guidance that I would want this committee to have, where they are completely free to have whatever discussions they want to have, we do for, for sure, <laughs> and, say, and say what needs to be said and hash it out. But there is a, a staff member there with that guidance to provide that guidance to say that's actually not legal, or we did do that and it was a disaster, but you can still recommend it if you want. Or, I mean, and I, 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 I know at the end of the day, I think what it comes down to is trusting the, the person that we've hired to be our town manager, to operate in a professional, neutral capacity, which she has always demonstrated across the board that she's capable of. And so I wouldn't, so for me, it seems like a no brainer that we should have Sophie or senior staff, you know, um, providing that guidance to this committee. Yeah, and, and I also too, I mean, just to add to that, I, it's, it scares me, a it scared me a little bit to hear that conversation um, because I don't wanna see this committee as being adversarial, you know, that we can't say what we need to say. It's all gonna be public anyway. So whoever, whatever you're discussing, is going to be uh, the public is going to be able to hear and see and be there, but um, but this shouldn't be an adversarial committee. This shouldn't be an us against them. This should be a committee that is like Megan said, um, or even Sophie said, that's interwoven into the into the fabric. I mean, otherwise, um, otherwise it would be a disaster. I don't I don't chair a committee that says we have to do this, you know, to to save the environment. I chair a committee that that looks at all the options. And, and I mean, if you're looking at a kind of an outside the box kind of thing um, and, and, um, and, and, you know, staff will bring stuff to us and we will discuss other things, but it's not adversarial in any way, shape or form. So, so I, I get what Jeff is saying. I, I truly do. Um, I don't know if I agree with it, but I get it. <laughs> um, I, um, and I just wonder if part of the committee charge can delineate what staff's role is, because there are times that staff brings stuff and I don't want people to think we all agree with what council decides. It's our job to, um, support and move forward with what council decides. And I don't think it's a personal thing. I don't think it's about Belle and the role she has or Jeff Lowe. I think it's that we have professional people because that is the job description. Um, but I also understand that so much of what we're talking about is around perception and how what people perceive, right? Um, and I see it with new counselors not wanting to offend, taking an awful lot of time to not offend staff when it takes a lot to offend staff. Um, I, so I wonder if we could look at in the charge very clearly what staff's role is. And um, business is business and it shouldn't be personal is actually part of our senior staff mission. So. Um, to think about how I can weave that in, Jeff, maybe let me, yeah. let me try it my way and see if I can convince you. Yeah, that's fine. I, I think good idea. Kind of clarity of language would be great. Yeah. And if you have ideas, I would be totally open. And if at the end of the day, you look at it and say, this isn't addressing my concern, I'm still concerned about X or Y, then we should talk about it again. Yeah. Is that? Sounds good. Are you giving up or do you agree? <laughs> no, I agree that I would like to see some language. I okay. think that's great. All right. Great. So um, I, actually, for me, I, I want to echo um, what Mega said. I think, you know, through this whole thing, uh, uh, making sure that um, we set this committee up and with the right tools and, 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 
and exactly what should what what we what we want to have done is is important. You know, I mean, I I, I think that a lot of times people don't really get the information or and I know that Sophie's the one who's always in the middle of this she's because she knows all this stuff and she's been working on that I mean I mean it was like even at committee night or candidate night when when we were like I had to spend some time ex explaining where where we're at what was going on what would we have and and some candidates didn't really realize that so it's important of us to make sure that we get that to them that they they know exactly where we're at at any given point so 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 if you're going to work on that part for, to convince <laughs> jeff um and then yes laurie you're muted you're muted i just have a point of clarification uh which uh megan said that you know of course everyone gets to be heard and we never have any problems or I don't know, I should have written down exactly what you said, but there was something that you said about, you know, that we're all able to communicate. No, nope, uh, that's not what I said. Please don't go right. off on a tangent about something that is misconstruing what I said. Please, please. I'm asking very nicely. Please don't do that. That's not what I said. Would you like so me to you? say it or? Sure, go ahead. I just said that we have spirited discussions. That's all. That, that's what I was saying. We have lively spirited discussions. That's it. I think there was a, a place in which you, um, you you mentioned that everyone felt comfortable, but I, I don't always feel comfortable on this committee and I don't always feel heard. And so when, when discussing- well, uh, Lori, Lori I, 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 I hope that I, I've been trying my best to make sure I see your hand every time it's there. Oh, no, no, not, I mean, I, again, I'm experiencing, I'm talking about my experience, as I said, I'm, I'm okay. experiencing a time of being triggered where I remember things that happened in the past and it's a little hard for me to disconnect the things that are being said now um, from my experience over time. So my experience over time being on the council has not always been where I felt that what I had to say was listened to or, or and um, so for example, even just what happened right now, which is I asked Jeff for clarification and made a comment and then Megan responded to Jeff and did not respond to the comment I made as if it hadn't been said. So, um, so and I think that we run the risk and we're all white here. We all, as I mentioned before, we're you know we all have a certain amount of privilege and education, and uh, you know I think that we run the risk of when we assume because we're comfortable that other people would be comfortable, that we are missing what the goal of this committee is, which is to to make a place where people can help inform us of how we could do better, and so that's really an important thing to keep in mind that. The people we're inviting to be on this committee are going to be advisors to the council on how the council can do better and to assume that it's all fine um misses the point that maybe it's not always fine even if some people feel mm -hmm. fine okay thank you so um let's move on on to are we on the how does the committee integrate with the current within the current organization organizational structure. Do the committee recommendations advance a specific item to the community development committee council workshop or directly to council meeting for further consideration? Um, we had a few items on this. Um, thoughts from, from councilors? I, I think, I think it could go to either workshop or community development committee. I, I, I guess I don't think it should go directly to our monthly council meeting. I would agree with you on that. I, I, I feel like it should go to the to a committee meeting first um, and then um, go from there as needed. Uh, I don't know what any other thoughts are on that. I only yeah. wouldn't say like, community development specifically, because there are just other, just because, how do I say this? Just because it's a JEDI committee doesn't mean it's automatically gonna be community development. I mean, there could be uh, issues around uh, how we allocate funds that might be relevant. Mm -hmm. And so that should be a finance committee decision. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Or like zoning, which would be my committee. I mean, so it's, it's I think that either the workshop or the fact that we have the all committee process going right now 
means that it could find whatever the, the item is, it could find its home in the appropriate committee, or we could just refer it to a council workshop. I think they actually said really good about, since we are doing joint committees now, if we continue that road, um, that, that would be so much easier to be able to place it where it specifically needs to be placed. Any yeah. other thoughts? I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and we've really limited workshops um, for a while when it was once a month committees and trying to get everybody all together. We were really creating this other whole workshop process that if you've noticed, we've really dialed that back quite a bit. So I like it would just be referred um, to a committee or workshop and then we can the, but the general idea being what I'm hearing from council is you don't want to open up your monthly formal council meeting with an, an order that right. you haven't vetted, which is in keeping with the way we do everything else here. Yep. Yes, yes, I agree. Any other thoughts on that from anybody? Okay, let's move on then to how are the committee work plan and meeting agendas developed? Thoughts? Would it be helpful if I told you why I put that question on this? Yes. That would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, the manager's office or the town planner in the case of the planning board really drive the whole agenda setting process, right? The, the council tells me what your general work plan is. We kind of agree on a path. And then I might work with committee chairs around kind of a path forward with specific agenda items. But a lot of the time you guys are really relying on me to create items and bring them forward. I think by the way you answered the first question, it would seem to me that um, while staff, and I think it makes sense that we utilize our internal agenda posting notice process um, where staff is kind of creating even now with the environment committee, the agendas, and they go out through a uniform way that this committee appears to kind of have multiple information flows. So maybe the answer is that the staff person meets with the committee chair a couple weeks before the meeting is scheduled, talks about the items coming in front of it and create the mm -hmm. agenda together, much like the environment committee is doing. So you're getting the issues that staff would like to have considered also bringing any council issues through staff where they normally would come and but that it is not like bell doesn't tell you what your agenda is going to be it's mm -hmm. a collaborative effort and right. everybody gets it gets kind of made right does that make sense yep. but i think in order for me to get there i had to know what you envisioned for the first piece which i think is pretty clear Makes sense. Makes sense to me too. Um, any other thoughts from people? No. no. Okay, we'll move on. E, is this an evergreen committee? Will it sunset at a date certain or will it be given in an established shorter term, one to two years with check-ins to evaluate the process and accomplishments? Thoughts? No one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we kind of talked earlier about <clears throat> about it being a, a two year um, committee with an opportunity to review it um, at the end of each of those two years and to make sure that the charge doesn't need to be modified, adjusted, or any of the other factors that affect it need to be um, looked at. I think um, proceeding in a 
way kind of similar to um, the environment committee where, you know, it's like you might, the key, I, I'm the one who wrote the thing about the key to this work is that we need to stay flexible. And so mm -hmm. what, what, we're, what we need to do is meet a particular, we need to meet a particular need. And we are creating something out of the ether now, thinking that we're making the best plan, but ultimately through the process that might not be the best plan and we might need to be flexible. So I would favor either within the first year or two years um, doing kind of a, a comprehensive check-in with the with the members of the committee you know and with staff is this functioning are there things we need to tweak do we need to dial in the charge do we need to change the way that the committee functions um to make sure that it can be responsive because the last thing literally the last thing in the world that i want is for this committee to follow down the same path as so many committees littered all over the country that were created in a groundswell of let's do something right now and then they're dormant and they don't do anything. I don't want that. And that's been my goal from day one. I do not want that to happen to this committee. So um, making sure that we either within the first year or two years check in to make sure that if there's anything we need to adjust to make it more functional, more robust, that we do that. Um, I'm not, I, I would see it as an evergreen committee. I wouldn't, I don't favor like this is a trial period and then maybe this committee will go away. I don't favor that model at all. But I definitely believe that there needs to be kind of like a come together, reevaluate what changes do we need to make to be even more effective going forward. I, I, I think time is important here because the things. <laughs> The things that you're asking this committee to do are not identify, solve, move on, identify, solve, move on. And as you have seen here, from identifying an issue to figuring out how to integrate the solution into policies, ordinances, whatever, takes time. And one of the things you will see through the budget that you guys are going to get in just a couple of months um, is me consistently saying we can do this well, we can do it fast, mm -hmm. or we can do it cheap, pick two. And my sense of working for this committee is that we want to do things well, and we want to do them cheap. And fast is kind of where we've fallen down. And so I would think you'd want a good amount of time understanding that every year, perhaps that report back from the group, either annually or biannually, a formal report where you might tweak charges, which we, we do. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't, I, I do think that this group is going to need time in order to affect change. And Everything I'm seeing through um, Society for Human Resource Managers and other municipal places tell us that in order to truly make change and to build a culture, um, we need to move the needle. And moving the needle means small incremental steps, and that takes time. And when you consider that where we have been with all of our municipal thoughts, whether it's service delivery or how we train employees or what the message is, is we're supposed to be blind and treat everybody equally. And what we're, what we're seeing is we don't want to be blind and we don't want to treat people equally. We want everybody to have the equitable service, right? And that's going to take tweaking and getting buy-in and moving things forward and identifying and tweaking mm -hmm. just so I think you want time so I just be careful if you think that this is going to be a ton of meaningful change just with a snap of a finger I, I think this is a longer committee that needs to get woven into kind of the fabric of what we do you know we've talked about this before saying that the, that there's like the 
I know people want that big home run, but the reality is to have an effective change, we, it's going to take time. Um, and, and, and I agree that I, it, it's going to be, a, have to, I, I'm thinking more like a two year committee, but to make thought of um, check ins, I, I, I agree with that completely. Is it a, a quarterly part of our council meeting, once a quarter, that we kind of look at it and see where we're at just as a normal item on it? Not sure. Um, but I think it is going to be one of those things that we're going to have to keep our finger on the pulse with that. I think too that um, the culture changes and shifts so that we do have to have some time. Um, because it is, I think we talked about this the last time, whatever we do has to be a living document. Um, it has to shift and change with, with whatever is happening. In our in our our society or our culture, and um, and who knows what's going to be happening in a year or two or four. Any other, Jeff? You have any thoughts? No, I really appreciate the idea that it's it's going to be a multi-year process. This is, you know, and that we need to give the people who sit on the committee time to do their work. Yeah, 100% of that. So, um, so what, Sophie, do you, do you need like um, a, a definitive right now of, I mean, you don't, okay. So what I am hearing, and I asked that question because there have been in Orono's history, those three different models of we're creating a committee, that committee is always going to be here. The trails committee, it's a trails committee. It's always going to be here. It might change what it does or how we kind of tweak it, but we create that with the idea it's going to be here for, for a long time. You have created committees, not maybe the individuals here right now, but the council has created committees that have a specific sunset provision in them. Not my favorite because they exist on paper. And then when people want to use them, they have formally been, and, and oftentimes they're not even off the ground and then they're done. Um, and um, if things are time limited, I think you need to tell people ahead of time. So what I'm hearing is you want to create a committee and let's kind of create a way to get on the committee with some staggered terms so that as it rotates through, we're not losing everybody at once um, with some formal check-ins. Um, I, would, I would wonder if a formal check-in, maybe kind of the way you bring people, you onboard people where we do evaluations in rapid succession when we're first rolling it out, um, but then it becomes less, right? So maybe we do quarterly when we first start but then roll it into a biannual, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a informal check-in at a committee and then a formal um, report once a year or something like that. So you, because they're also gonna have tasks that should be working through the committee structure. So right. just a thought. Yep. No, I like that idea. Great, any other thoughts on this? Okay, let's go on to reviewing the ad hoc committee and staff reports as well as the matrix and toolkit provided. What areas do you see as recommendations that are in alignment with the town's current efforts? Thoughts on this? It just seems that um, these two items seem more operational. Sophie, so these might not fit into the grand charter. Right. No, this was, and I don't know if this is where you guys would like to break, but um, I saw, I had, I thought I had two kind of marching orders from council. One was to help guide you through the process of creating a charge. And then the other was this idea of a formal DEI plan or priorities, because I would think that your plan and priorities would kind of help guide 
the committee at least to start. Um, and so as an example, one of the things that would be helpful from an operation standpoint is right now the town is not we don't throw a lot of parties we don't celebrate a lot of things where um being out of the box you know we've got our birthday celebration that we started a couple of years ago and we have some community events but we don't tend to celebrate a lot of other things right um if you look at um the ad hoc committee's charge, there's a lot in there about celebrations and acknowledgements. And if council wanted to move in that direction in developing a plan, I'd really, we'd want to think about how to support that. That's all I'm kind of trying to get a sense of what you think the priority should be for a plan moving forward. And I'm kind of thinking about like what Boulder, Colorado and some of the um, Portland, Oregon, some of the big cities have done, but try to right size it because I can't, I don't think that we can do a, a matrix of, you know, a hundred goals for the next year. Um, I think we need to kind of pick and choose. So I was just looking to try to get some feedback from council about kind of, are we on the right place with kind of where staff is going? Does it already align with a lot of the committee's recommendations? Are there places that you want us to, to look at what the committee has recommended and give you some goals for how we could reach that? Do you wanna kick it back to the committee? Do, are there things that you see that the committee has suggested, but they're, while important, not municipal in nature, and therefore we should kind of set them aside. Or I'm just trying to, oh, I was trying to walk you through helping me set priorities for the plan. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. It seems like there was a lot of overlap in the responses in this whole section. Um, not just a, but the whole question too. Um, you know, the recommendations that are in alignment with the town's current efforts. I think we're pretty, we're pretty well versed on that with the with the matrix that you drew up for us in terms of what's already underway, and we have been involved in some some, some of these initiatives. So, um, you know, I it didn't it didn't seem like there was a lot of sort of discrepancy in that answer to me. Um, most of the first half of the recommendations seem to be like things that are already kind of part of our ongoing process. Um, the ones that should be priorities that are not part of the current efforts um, seem to be things that are on the radar but haven't quite gotten off the ground yet, like um, uh, creating an inclusive policy that supports current handicapped parking spaces, which staff is recommending that we hire a consultant to do that. Um, and that is something that we might consider. Um, and then the other two options were to, to kind of, in different ways, acknowledge um, both um, the history of town land and Chief Orono and the relationship with the, nation, the Penobscot Nation but also using town signage, which we've kind of been talking about, you know, in terms of highlighting language and history and how can, you know, if we were going to have signage around town that were that was giving the history of parts of Orono, instead of simply looking at the history of the people who colonized Orono, but also the history of what the land was before it was colonized um, as well, we've discussed. Um, it seemed to me looking through all of the feedback here that there's a lot of kind of wanting to engage more thoughtfully with um, Wabanaki history, um, with um, our relationship to the Penobscot Nation in terms of how we 
organize ourselves as, as a town. Um, I was really interested in the answers to the potential stakeholders that should be included in the town's efforts, but may not really be like at the forefront of people's minds, one of which being business owners and another being um, organizations that service or advocate for low income individuals and families. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts? No? So can I ask just two questions from an operational standpoint? I don't know if everybody has noticed, but the message at the end of every council meeting agenda has changed. Um, and instead of the legally required ADA notice, it now explains that people who need assistance should to participate in or receive town services or participate in the meeting should call the contact the town manager's office and it gives kind of that information. And then it also goes on to say that the town is an equal opportunity um, employer and service provider. So um, is that enough in council's mind to kind of be the midpoint between providing an ASL interpreter and mm -hmm. languages, you know, language interpreters at this idea of the universal accommodation versus as you need it accommodation if that so like is that that's my attempt to balance the budget mm -hmm. and the need and mm -hmm. so like that is an operational response um for right now are you good with that can i ask a question does and i've never seen this before so i don't know mm -hmm. does zoom have the, capa the capacity or facebook or however we stream to closed caption? YouTube does. YouTube so does. What happens is the closed caption happens after we post our meetings on okay. YouTube. But not during. Not or, uh, during. I don't see how it could actually if it was live. Yeah. Um, well, what you can do is hire somebody to transcribe it as people talk and you mm -hmm. can get closed caption. It's expensive, but it's yeah. possible. Um, so, like, so I guess one of the things that as we work through the charge and the and the plan, the other thing that would be kind of helpful is to get some feedback on the lift that has already been done in an effort to try to meet some of these things. Like I I have not put the land acknowledgement on the draft. You guys next week are gonna see a draft letterhead and new, new signage mock-ups that have been done by the company so that they can be printed. Because um, evidently, Bell and Mitch do amazing work, but it's not work that can just show up on a sign. Um, but is that, that keeps coming up over and over and over again. I think about operationally the space I need and the fact that people only want one page um often for a letter but if that's important then we should weave that in i've seen it multiple places that would be helpful for me to to kind of understand too and to maybe think about that when we bring the mock-up back to folks sophie to to respond to the question about like you know is that line to contact the town manager's office like is that okay i want to answer that question like yes and no, <laughs> because <laughs> asking for an accommodation is a barrier and having to reach out and, and take the initiative to request a specific accommodation is in and of itself not equitable. And we know, I mean, the, the, the research shows this, we know this. However, we, we simply, I mean, we absolutely cannot afford to have an ASL interpreter 
present at every meeting or to hire a closed captioning service that will, I mean, like there, the, this is the issue. So, and I think this, for me, it connects to the final part of question two, which is the items or issues that are not currently addressed in the materials provided that you believe should be part of the town's DEI initiative. And I will be transparent and say that I, I'm the only one who responded to this question. So that, that paragraph is me saying mm -hmm. that I think that the council and the community have to have a frank discussion about the budget. And this was reflected in the candidates night speeches or conversations as well. Many candidates advocated for wanting more, 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 the town should do more, but yet the service level should also stay high. The, the amenities that the community wants should also stay high, except we need to lower taxes. And this is something we hear from the community a lot. And I'm not making a judgment about people wanting these things. I want all the things too. I want all of those things. But the fact of the matter is that we, we cannot add more things to the budget and also lower taxes without money coming from somewhere. So I think that there needs to be a bigger conversation with council and with community members. You know, if we talk about the pool, we'll have lots of impassioned people showing up to say, open that pool, put that $30,000 in the budget and open that pool. Well, then, you know, like we also can't hire an ASL interpreter. We, maybe we would be better off curtailing some community amenities and having funding a position for a permanent DEI director. But these are all conversations that really need to be had in a frank way that aren't being had. I think what's happening is we're hearing from the public that they want lots of things, but they also don't wanna pay higher taxes. And I understand that too, neither do I. So we're kind of getting to a breaking point. We were already at a breaking point, just funding operations with the very low tax property tax base that we have in this town, since only half of the town is taxed, <laughs> so land wise. So again, I just wanna repeat, like, I think that that note at the bottom of the agendas is good enough for what we can afford to do now. And if we want to, but it's a good example for me for the ways in which if we wanted to address these issues the way that they should be addressed, where we know that having to ask for an accommodation is a barrier, then we would need to put our money where our mouth is. Nobody's yet interested in putting the money where their mouth is. And so that's a much bigger conversation that ties into the budget. And I just want to say that not to open up a debate about it, but just to say, I think that's something we need to be thinking about and that the community needs to be thinking about. So good enough for now, but maybe part of a larger problem with some of the things that we're trying to do and the changes we're trying to make while balancing a budget. Anything else? Megan, maybe we could since we do have a budget coming up, budget season is coming up, maybe we could make some space at that time, if, if it's necessary. Yeah, I would just love to have the community more engaged in the budget process so that they can really see like, yeah, we're not, we're not just throwing money around willy nilly and wasting it on stuff. I mean, we're scraping every penny together to provide the quality of life that people enjoy in Orno. And when we talk about adding more to that, we have to be realistic about where that money is coming from. And if your values are, well, we need to invest money in our, in, in our ethics. If a budget is an ethical document, then we maybe have to say, okay, then I'm willing to pay a bunch more money in my taxes every year to make sure that I can afford that. Or maybe that isn't what people want. So I think that the, I really, really want the public to be more engaged in the budget process. And they, if think, they, go ahead. I was gonna say, and if they would be more engaged, it just so happens that the manager's budget has a whole discussion item on DEI <laughs> and how much money we want to spend. There we go. You know, it's funny is that, it, 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 and I'm glad that that Meg that you 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 made that point is, is that I mean I'm hearing it even out in the public. You know, there's the thing about like 
uh, you know, there's always that taxes. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And and the reality is, is when you're when you're on council, then you realize. I remember back in my first year, the the when you get hit in the head with like the realities of what you have to work with within a community that wants to be having the best, it's not an easy thing to do. And I think it is important that the public take the time, even people who are like trying to learn more about government to really understand what we're what we're working with here. <coughs> And I certainly appreciate the comments that, that you made, uh, Megan, and, and I really agree with them. It, having more public participation is something that nobody would argue against. However, we're still going to have the difficult decision making as the decision makers, because you're not going to get unanimity from the public on almost any issue. And I think we all know that. So... I feel like I have enough to bring you back a couple of draft documents um, in, in a bit, not like next week, but in a few weeks. Yep. That work? Yeah. So, do we have anything else on? <laughs> We have a town manager's report, I guess. Yes. So um, over the last year, I have brought up during, I think, just about every um, meeting that we have discussed the financial statements or the budget reports that the fire department is um, on schedule to go over budget. <coughs> and um, I sat down. Uh, because we had yet another person go out on long-term medical leave. Um, and I looked at what, I'm just trying to pull up what I sent folks. Um, I looked at what um, we had, kind of what we've already expended and then also what we are projecting. So this represents the chief, which he did a few weeks ago, um, saying we putting a formal spending freeze um, on the department. So we would argue everything we ask for we need. Council has, has most definitely told us not to put wish items in annual budgets. So, um, so what he's done is it's now, if you don't need it right this minute, we are not gonna get it. Um, and uh, based on the overtime for, now we're covering two um, full-time absences, long-term absences. Um, overtime, we're anticipating um, another $129,000 of overtime and that's spread through unscheduled overtime, vacation coverage, and sick coverage. Um, and um, we are the retirement and FICA associated with that. Our workers' compensation bill, which comes in in January and December for January through December of each year, has come in. We have our first payment due. And we are looking at um, about a $10,000 overage. Um, part of that has to do with the comp rate, which we've talked about in the fire department. And then the other part is also when we added the shift um, for additional staffing. Um, that is a formula <laughs> that's payroll and um, experience. So we got hit twice there. So at the end of the day, we are looking at an overage right now that we're estimating will be about 10% or $239,000. Um, I am going through the process of looking at where we might be able to curb expenditures at this point. Um, this is a fairly large overage in the department. So I don't know that I will have budget adjustments that will um, meet this, but 
Um, I'll have more information, but you know, I don't like to run in the, in the red without making sure everybody is fully aware that this might mean that we end the year, um, if not maybe in the gray or maybe in the light pink, but um, just wanna make sure people were aware. And we're also aware that Jeff, so you're gonna see things in the budget next year where like we have stopped all of the emergency management efforts um, that we normally would be undertaking this time of year. We're just not going to, we're not gonna do it um, because um, it is not absolutely necessary, but you'll see that there will be items that we're not, you know, budget items that we ha are not expending, but we will still need next year. Okay, it's the first one. The second item is um, the housing committee report, which I gave everybody access to. Mm -hmm was the basis for a housing bill that um, was printed last week. I uh, attended an MMA meeting where we talked at length about potential impacts of that bill. There are some things in that bill that uh, might be of uh, concern mm -hmm. to the community um, and um, impact the community. Um, also of concern about that bill is just, um, I think the, the concept is one that council would 100% get behind around um, affordable housing. I think affordable, creating affordable housing is really important to the town council and our community. Um, I just, um, as working through the bill, I think there might be some unintended consequences here. Um, as I work through, um, this, I will hope to get some um, a bulleted list out to counselors um, so that you can kind of see what my concerns might be and we might be able to talk about um, it next week. The thing I am concerned about is this seems to be, although as of last Thursday, there's no public, there, the public hearing on the bill hadn't been scheduled. What I've been told is that the intent is for this to be passed before the legislature adjourns in April. So this is pretty fast tracked. Um, I don't wanna get out in front of the council, but I also think that um, if there are potential impacts in the community, we should let community members know because the other feedback I've received is that um, municipalities and municipal government are not seen um, by this current legislature as um, valid contributors to this process. Mm. The MMA is not in it's not in support of this bill. No, the MMA is 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 um, is going to oppose the bill. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and what was really difficult when we had the conversation is that. There wasn't one person in the room that opposed the idea of working towards finding affordable housing. Um, and unfortunately, that seems to be the way this is kind of lining up is if you don't agree with the bill, you don't support affordable housing. And so instead of taking a position on the bill at this point, um, I think we need to kind of instead turn our attention to what might the unintended consequences of this be. If you increase density throughout the community, um, what does that mean for without consideration of um, public infrastructure and stuff like that? What does what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I I'll have a better sense. This is just really really fast in a very very busy mm -hmm. time, so. Um, we'll try to have a sense, and I don't want to get out in front of council with this. But. My sense of it is that um, it would be a, a, a loss of local control, mm -hmm. is what I have read and heard. Okay. 
Uh, I think that <laughs> anything else? It's very yeah. similar to what Megan said that, you know, if you ask anyone, even the people that were running for office, the majority will say that they want taxes not to increase, but in fact to run the town, but they also want things to be done to improve. And so the money would have to come from somewhere or you'd have to have a tax increase. In the same way with affordable housing, if you ask everyone and pretty much everyone who agree we need affordable housing, but that's been something that has been agreed upon for a long time. But with the current tools that we have, it has not occurred. And so actually this, you said that the, the legislature is you know, not listening to municipalities and not working with the MMA. But in fact, the legislature made a working group on housing that included all different stakeholders and uh, has changed this bill in response to input from MMA. And my, the last I heard from the housing caucus is that MMA was neither for nor against. So this is new to hear that MMA is against this bill. And, uh, and it, they, the bill was with those stakeholders trying to come up with the tools to address the housing problems that we have across the state. And, uh, and one of those big, one of the problems is that local control ends up with every single town saying, well, I believe in affordable housing, but just not here. And, and mm. that ends up that there's no place to put it if every every town says not here. Mm. So that is, this is a state a way to address this problem. So. Um, is there any more, do you have any, any more report? No, we've got a full agenda next Monday, multiple committees. Um, I've heard from four counselors about the audit. Um, based on that, I have, I'm assuming that everybody who has an audit, who everybody has an audit in whatever form they wanted it. <laughs> One is priority mail to you, Tom. Um, yep, and thank you. We have yours and everybody else has it electronically. Um, and we will do the presentation of the audit next week in Great. hopes that you will feel like you can adopt it in March so that we can get ready to do it all over again. Sounds good. Um, are we ready to adjourn? That's not a me question. That's a are we ready question. to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> I don't think we need a motion in committee. All right. All right. Meeting. Meeting. Good night. Thanks all. Good night.